The worst kept secret in the NFL is revealed today. Our John Clark confirming multiple reports that the Eagles have fired offensive coordinator Brian Johnson this after just one season calling the plays for the Birds. The Eagles offense finished eighth in both points and yards this season, dropping from third in each category from last year. Johnson interviewed for the head coaching vacancies in both Tennessee and Atlanta, but will not be back with the Birds. Huddle up as we welcome you to Birds Huddle, powered by Fanatic Sportsbook, Michael Barkamp, Barrett Brooks. If the Eagles played an 11-game schedule, everything might be fine right now. But the final seven games were a difference maker for Nick Sirianni's coaching staff. Barrett, the head coach, is getting one more year. Did Brian Johnson deserve the same consideration? And that on at the bird's turn. <laughs> yes, indeed. This is nothing but a soap opera. And understanding what, you know, what is going on. They let this, uh, their offensive coordinator go in an offense that is Nick Sirianni's offense. I mean, why wouldn't he get another opportunity, huh? I don't know. You know, that's, that's the crazy part about all this. Mm -hmm. We will see how this plays out as we bring you Barrett's three-point stance. Number one, the Eagles' offense needs some help. But from who? From where? They obviously have the pieces to be a great offense, and we're still top ten. What kind of coordinator do they need to get back to be truly elite, Barrett? Well, well maybe it's Nick. Maybe Nick needs to turn around and start calling his own plays. I think that may be the key of uh, how they're going to go forward with it. Because if you keep your head coach and he's the offense that you know you're using his offense, why wouldn't you just have him call the plays? Or are you going to bring in a guy like like you see Eric Bieniemy? Uh, Gerard Johnson. I, I think Jim uh, Bob Cooter, I think he's out. He, you know, it'll be a, a, a lateral move unless the Colts say he can go. But I mean, I mean, Josh Daniels, you know, Kellen Moore, that's an interesting guy. Do you bring in their offense? I think the only guy that makes real sense on this whole list, I think, would be Frank Wright because I'd be like minds, like offenses, and, and it's an offense that, you know, he can just push right into it and, and be good with it, you know. Plus, it's the trust factor of him being a guy that, you know, he went up through the ranks underneath Frank Wright. Eric Bieniemy, he would just, if he came in, he would want, you know, sole authority on calling plays. Yeah. You know, and that would he, that would make Nick Sirianni just a guy like, you know, that, that wouldn't call plays. You know, I mean, they go through this, you know, through the, the game planning. Of, but I don't think that they would, you know, necessarily have him do that. I mean, why would you keep Nick? If you're going to change the entire office, then you change the entire coach, then the head coach, then. So I don't see them bringing in somebody that has a different offense. I think they have a they have bring in a guy who knows the offense. And I think Frank is the only guy really at this point that they would go forward with that. With. If Nick Sirianni failed to call his own plays down the stretch, uh, how big a knock is that on him? That he didn't take the reins. Well, you got to stop the bleeding somehow. And I, I would have thought he would have went in there and said, look, I mean, you're making my offense look bad. Or maybe he knew something that was going on uh, within the players, within the culture of the locker room or something like that, you know, kept him from doing that. But, you know, I, I doubt seriously he's one of those guys who want to undermine who his coaching staff is. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure he wanted, you know, Johnson to go ahead and, and call the offense because it is his offense. But, man, that's kind of telling. It's kind of damning when you look at it because it's his offense. It's run the way he wants to. And what we saw from lack of production, not just a lack of production, but lack of innovation in what you saw out on the field, you know, even though they're eighth in the NFL as far as points. They still lacked a lot of um, that, you know, stuff that you see from like the 49ers as far as window dressing and all that stuff. And, you know, the potency of the offense just wasn't where we're used to seeing either, you know, the offense running or Hurts being effective in it. Stance number two, this news might hurt Hurts. Hurts and Johnson have a relationship dating back to when Jalen Hurts played for Jalen's dad in high school. In fact, last week, Hurts mentioned Johnson by name when discussing Sirianni's potential return as head coach. Take a listen. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. I had no idea that was a thing. Um, so I don't see why, why that wouldn't be the case. You know, we, we plan on fixing everything that we've, we've done. Um, and growing together. Coach Sirianni, Brian, everyone. Just to clarify, Johnson played for Hertz's 
dad in high school. Barrett, they paid Jalen Hurts $255 million bucks. Now they get rid of his OC. How do you think he's feeling? <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, you know, I, he can't be feeling good if the relationship was what we're thinking the relationship was. You know, I mean, even though he was only like four years old when um, he was playing under his dad. But they, you know, they kept close. They called. In fact, he tried to recruit him to the University of Florida during that time uh, when he was at Florida or Mississippi State or something like that. Um, Mississippi State. Yeah, when he was, you know, there. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, it didn't seem like they on the field and during game day, there was a close relationship, you know, because I usually saw Jalen Hurts by himself. And as officer coordinator, you usually see guys around him trying to make him better. Um, I don't know what that dynamic was. Was the relationship as close as we thought it was? Or, you know, as they go forward, if they would have gone forward, you know, how tight was that relationship? It really depends on production, you know, and we didn't see the right production. And like I say, I always say, heads are going to roll when you don't have, you know, the, the, the statistics, you know, the say, all right, you're my guy going forward. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, is what have you done for me lately, league? He didn't do much for this offense. Well, there's, you know, besides being an eighth-ranked offense, but at the end of the day, you know, they want production, and, and usually somebody has to fall for it. Stance number three, Nick Sirianni will be on the hot seat all season. The head coach returning with two new coordinators puts him squarely in the crosshairs, doesn't it, Barrett? Depending on who the new coordinators are, could it make Sirianni tantamount to a lame duck? Well, I mean, of course he's going to be on the hot seat. That's one of the most historic downfalls I've ever seen a team go through. I mean, to lose the last six out of seven, of course it's going to be something, you know, that I've never seen anything like that in history as far as a collapse. So, yes, he's on the hot seat. In fact, he started being on the hot seat when he lost to, you know, Arizona. You know, that was huge to me that, you know, how do you lose to Arizona? And then to follow that up by losing to the Giants again, yes, he's on the hot seat, but, hey, they're giving him an opportunity to go out and rewrite his wrongs, to get this thing going in the right direction. And, you know, people don't understand, you know, where, you know, Nick Sirianni goes, I think it really goes where um, Jalen Hurts goes. I mean, because they're tied by the hip, you know, so – how do they go forward? You know, can they mess up that relationship? Do they go forward with that relationship? Is Nick Sirianni necessarily the guy that they want going forward? We'll see. I believe in Nick. I think he has a culture in which he can reestablish in, in that locker room again. But he's going to have to have some strong coordinators going forward in order for him to, you know, get off the hot seat and have production. So he gets a one-year lease on that office, a one-year lease on that apartment. You know, yeah. a one-year lease of yeah. you going forward. But strong but not too strong. I mean, think about this. Ron Rivera comes in. He's a former D.C. under Andy Reid. He's a former two-time head coach, most recently with Washington. Frank Reich already has been O.C. here. He's a former head coach of Nick Sirianni. So what's it like when those two big guns come here and they're taking orders from Nick? That's an amazing com uh, you know, combination of guys coming in who can help you. I don't think Nick will have any uh, type of you know woes as far as, all right, they're going to take my job or anything like that. That. It'll be nothing like that. I believe he'll come in and the respect factor will be there. And, you know, he has under the, he was under the tutelage of, uh, you know, going forth. And I, I, I saw this, you know, a great situation with Doug and Coach Schwartz, you know, when they were there. You know, just let him take care of that side of the defense, you know, that side of the team. And it was a great working relationship. They won a Super Bowl with that. So I don't think wrong with that. Yeah. Schwartz, by the way, you know, how many how many more yards can he give up? <laughs> I, th I think the Patriots just got another five yards. They didn't win, but they tacked on some yardage. We will hear from Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni tomorrow at their season-ending news conference. The time is still TBD, but we will carry it here live on NBC Sports Philadelphia and online. Plenty of questions to be asked. Plenty of questions to ask these gentlemen right here. Back by popular demand before the offseason really kicks in. <laughs> He's a dancer. <laughs> Jason Avant, what questions do you want answered by Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman tomorrow? Well, how are we going to address the defense, right? When it comes to the draft and it comes to free agency, if you look at the NFL playoffs that's happening right now, you see outstanding linebacker play by all teams. They are running around and knocking people's heads off, and defenses are getting the ball back in the second level and the third level of the defense. Those are the two weakest areas on our football team. And with that being said, I'm looking forward to seeing how he's going to address the defense when it comes to the draft and free agency. How Absolutely. quickly, I mean, the season's only been over for the Eagles for a week. How quickly do they need to get coordinators in here? 
Well, the, the ASAP. I mean, get a coordinator here now. You know, this is the off season. That's. I think that has a lot to do with you know what happened to us last year. Not not really, but I'm just gonna give them a, a little more of an excuse. But I mean, when you go to the Super Bowl, that's the price of going to. You don't have a longer off season. That we've got a whole month a preparation we can do going into this all season that we're good and we'll be able to go out there and, and, and facilitate now. We didn't have that last year. Last year we had to wait till the second week of February. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just put the cart before the horse because of <laughs> course today the news is that Brian Johnson is out as OC that comes on the heels of Sean Desai and Matt Patricia both not returning. What do you make of the decision to get rid of both coordinators? Well, I think that's the only thing that you can do in this town. <laughs> and I think the fans were calling for it for most of the season. And I think that's the pressure of playing in one of the largest markets in Philadelphia and the fans. Yep. And I think that he had to do it. And this was the he was the fall guy. Brian Johnson and Sean Desai and, and Patricia, all those guys are fall guys. But Nick Sirianni has to do a better job. But there's some guys out there that I would like to see them have in here. Denar Wilson is a name, right? The mm -hmm. Ravens defense is Not playing well. And he can come back in. There's Don Martindale. We know that how much he likes to blitz. I would wink, love to wink. see us get back to the Jim Johnson days where we're an aggressive defense again and not this passive stuff. So I'm a little bit, um, you know, out with like Ron Rivera and that type of thing because he's too close to Sean McDermott. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's the, the question for both of you now. Does Nick Sirianni still have the requisite power to get things done as a head coach? Um, well, I mean, what do you mean by power? You talking about power to make decisions yeah. as far as who bringing in the coordinators, yeah. all that type of thing? You know, I, I mean, he's going to have to have some power, but it showed a, a lot what was going on as far as with the coordinators and, and, you know, on the defensive side of the ball and not being able to, you know, stop the bleeding from the defensive side of the ball, you know, regardless of the decisions that were made, you know. So was that Nick's call? Was that Howie's call? You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. So we'll see going forward. I believe they're going to give Nick because they're going to learn from what happened with Doug and, you know, Doug walked because he wanted that type of um, power to call and bring in whoever he wanted. So we'll see. We'll see. Jason, what, what changes with Nick's offense do you think? Well, here's the thing. I would like to see them bring in Frank Wright. I would think that would be the best fit for him because they have history. And I believe that Nick can learn a lot from Frank Wright and get to the point as a coach that when these guys leave, right, offensive coordinators, they poach your staff, Super Bowl winning type of teams, you get your staff poached all the time. So Frank Wright can help Nick Seriani develop to the point where he's the guy and that he's the brain trust. So when guys leave, they continue to run an offense and be able to pick up a blitz the proper way. So that's what I would like to see because I think Nick Seriani has a lot to grow as a head coach and I think Frank Wright can help him get there. Another couple years of tutelage from him well, would I, be a great thing. But I would like to see Ron Rivera in. Ron Rivera, he runs, you know, Todd Bowles, all those guys run the, you know, Leslie I'm Frazier were, were disciples of, of, you know, Philadelphia, you know, blitzing and bringing power, you know, Jimmy Johnson, late and great Jimmy Johnson. They were their kind of, you know. How about Mike Caldwell? Group. Mike Caldwell, I played with Mike in here in Philadelphia, as a matter of fact, you know, so, I mean, they're all disciples from that type of defense. Well, it all depends, right? So, Ron Rivera, Super Bowl, like, all those things, right, and, and, and Jim Johnson. So, when you consider that, I like that style. However, he's been around a bunch of coordinators lately that are bend but don't break. So, oh, okay. it all yeah. depends on what type of Ron Rivera it is. And, and as long as he's aggressive, I'm great. Well, this how, is Philly. We got to make it happen. How much do all these moves reflect Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman? A, and B, assuming that they do a lot, uh, but I want to hear from you, do they have too much power? Uh, uh, this, it's the owner's team, so well, he can do what he wants to do, and how is his second in command? So, I mean, they're going to make the decisions, you know, and they, they want to keep those decisions. That's why Doug had to leave, because Doug wanted to make decisions he couldn't make. So, I mean, I, I, I doubt seriously. And this, is a, this, this can be a potential problem, because yep. you have success doing it, but eventually the learning curve or the game changes, yep. right? So you see Jerry Jones, mm -hmm. for an example, had a lot to say early on in those Cowboys Super Bowls, and he did a great job, but the game passed him up, and now he's in a little bit too much, right? We don't want that here in Philadelphia. We want you to continue to give the players and the coaches everything that they need in order to be successful, but let the football people be the football people that train for this, spend all of their time, get paid top dollar to do it. Let's put those guys and let them make the decisions and not necessarily our owners. Well, Howie doesn't like that. No. Howie thinks of himself as a football guy. And I didn't say Howie. I just didn't say <laughs>